I recently wrote a paper for my Gospels class in which I got to pick a group from the first century and just do a background research on them. And so I chose the Zealots because they've always fascinated me and I want to take this opportunity to learn more about them. Now if you remember, one of the twelve disciples was Simon the Zealot. And so I really wanted to uh, learn more about him and the group he was a part of. So there were four main Jewish groups in the first century. First you had the Pharisees, you had the Sadducees, you had the Essenes, and then you had the Zealots. Just to simplify things and provide kind of more of a modern view, just kind of giving you some parallels, the Pharisees would be like modern conservatives, Republicans. This, and you know, they, they believed in uh, you know, the whole Old Testament, they believed in like the spiritual realm, you know, that there's a future resurrection of the dead, and you know, they believed in angels and demons and you know, held the, to a conservative faith. Then you had the Sadducees, which we would be more like uh, the modern liberals. Now, they only believed the first five books of, the Mose of, of Moses, and they denied a future resurrection of the dead and didn't believe in spiritual beings. And so they had more of a, a critical uh, belief system, more like the liberals of today. Then you have the Essenes, and the Essenes would be more like a f the fundamentalists. Uh, so they were more of a separatist group. They're the ones that, that, that went off into the caves and kind of, you know, uh, were, were more clicky and, you know, wanted to be separate and holy and get away from the world and just kind of go off into their own group. And then you had the Zealots, and the Zealots would be more akin to today's libertarianism. And so they often held to a conservative faith. Josephus says that they agreed with the Pharisees in, in everything, but that they had, uh, you know, their main characteristic, what defined them, what made them different, was their passion for liberty. So their drive of liberty, uh, which is like libertarians of today, which um, prize freedom and individuality. So I want to tell you a few more things about the zealots that I learned because it's really, really fascinating. So the first thing I want to say is just about our sources. Josephus is the primary source for the zealots. Now he was, uh, he was a, a Jewish man who was captured by the Romans and he was allowed to live um, but made to write a history of the Jewish war. So he was a prisoner of war and therefore you know there's kind of some some reasons why, why scholars don't necessarily believe his works are bias free. So he blamed the Jewish war or on the zealots, which he called the fourth philosophy. That's how he referred to them. But uh, he and he also said that they were a brand new group, that they were a small group, and uh, and most scholars don't actually believe that that is right. They believe he might have been downplaying that, you know, just trying to show that, you know, this this was maybe a, a smaller group, not really much resistance to Rome, just a newer thing. But anyways, we know the history of the Zealots where it starts. It starts in six A.D. with Judas the Galilean, and so basically. Uh, Rome was forcing uh, Judea to pay tribute and the, they were going to forcibly take money from the temple. Judas the Galilean opposed this, believing, you know, that, you know, Rome is, is not their authority. The, only God is Lord of the Jews, and this is their land, and they have no right to, to be taking money from them. And so he opposed them, led a revolt, and that is the starting of the Zealots. Now, Judas the Galilean was actually killed, but some of his sons lived on. Uh, a couple of his sons were, uh, were later killed just after the time of Jesus, and one of his other sons were, was involved in the Jewish war closer to 70 AD. Now, what you may not be, what you may not know, which and find fascinating, is that Judas the Galilean, remember the founder of the Zealots, is actually mentioned in the book of Acts. So if you remember, uh, Gamaliel in, in the book of Acts, he stands up and when he's talking about Jesus, you know, he, he's just saying, you know, like, like, don't worry. I mean, like, you know, when a person dies, you know, their, their followers scatter. And he mentions Judas and this is what he says. Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished and all who followed him were scattered. 
So I thought that was pretty cool. That's a reference to the beginning of the Zealots and the fact that when Judas died, they kind of scattered. And that's kind of what we know of history too because from that time, we don't hear about the Zealots until, uh, until about 40 years later. So people believe that either, you know, maybe this is a group where there was some, uh, you know, they maybe only rose up during certain times. So there was times where they weren't active or maybe that they were just ineffective and kind of like a footnote of history. Not really sure which one is true, of course, um, but, uh, but the fact is, is that we do see them come up at different points in history, uh, mainly 6 AD, around the 40s, and then at the Jewish War. So that brings us to Simon, Simon the Zealot, one of the 12 apostles. So obviously, you know, if, if this, this would be great evidence for the fact that the Zealots were active around, you know, the, the year 30 and just before, but uh, scholars aren't really sure if this is a correct translation. Is it Simon the Zealot or is it more of a descriptor, Simon the Zealous one? See, Paul uh, talks about how believers are, you know, zealous for the law. He says that he was one who was extremely zealous for the traditions of his fathers. And the, the Anchor Yale Bible Dictionary says that, you know, the failure of ancient manuscripts to distinguish uh, between formal nouns and descriptors causes some confusion so that we're not sure if this is, you know, this, are you saying this is a zealot, a member of the zealot group, or a zealous person? And so you can't necessarily know for 100% sure. Now regarding the beliefs of the zealots, once again Josephus says that they agree with the Pharisees and everything, so we know that they were conservative Jewish sect and that they were very rigorous about the law. They believed, you know, they, they were very proud of their nation. They loved the temple. They loved the, they loved the law. They loved their history. They loved their traditions. They, they, they despised the, the Hellenistic, the Roman influence. The, you know, they would have loved people going, going to temple and studying the law rather than going to the, the Roman gymnasium and, and, and kind of, taking part in the delicacies of Roman life. So just to give you a picture, anything that celebrated their heritage and their ways, they would have been for. And anything that kind of uh, superimposed another belief system on Judaism or tried to gain control over them um, or change their ways, they would have been against. And the main thing is that they were not passive people. They would take up arms and fight you. They took matters into their own hands. Now they wouldn't care if you're a Roman or a sympathizer of Rome, if you're the enemy or for the enemy, you're against them. You know, they, they love zeal, they love passion, they want purity, they have no time for wishy-washy uh, compromising beliefs or things that, you know, get in the way of, you know, the furtherance of Israel. So, you know, somebody, you know, they probably would hate a tax collector more than a Roman. You know, a Roman was born a Roman, but a tax collector made a choice to work for the enemy. You know, he could have been, uh, you know, a supporter of Israel, but no, you're, you're, you're making money off of Israelites by working for the enemy. So they, they would take matters into their own hands, uh, like their founder, Judas the Galilean, and, uh, and fight for Israel. Now, the last part of my paper was asking me what would the zealot response be to the Jesus of history? So if you had just have a, a typical zealot, not Simon the zealot, but a typical zealot, and they encounter Jesus, how would they have viewed him? And I kind of came to the conclusion that they would view him as a mixed, mixed bag, uh, which they wouldn't have any time for because they like, they like, you're either with me or against me. But they would have appreciated things like, you know, the fact that Jesus showed zeal when he cleansed the temple. And he's like, you know, like, this is my father's house. You're making it a, a den of thieves and like will overtone, uh, overturn the money changers. They would have liked stuff like that. That's how zealots like, you know, um, showing force and passion for, for, uh, for the purity of the temple. It would have been okay with, you know, Jesus telling his disciples to go buy swords. They would have liked the fact that Jesus stood against the Sadducees and said that the Pharisees were right, you know, in, in believing about the resurrection of the dead. So they would have said, you know, he's got pretty good doctrine. 
and they would have been if Simon was actually a zealot they obviously would have been uh, okay with the fact that one of one of their own was in Jesus's inner circle so those are kind of some of the positive things but there's a lot more negative that they would have despised so there are a lot of things that Jesus also did that they would not be okay with in Matthew 26 Jesus rejects violence uh, also, Jesus uh, tells people to love their enemies. Now, their enemies would have been Romans, and they would not be okay with loving them. They wanted to take force against them, not love their enemies. Jesus also told them parables like about how a tax collector would be uh, justified over a Pharisee. You remember that story where the Pharisee goes up and prays, and he says, I thank you, God, that I'm not like a... Fair, uh, not like a tax collector and the tax collector says has have mercy on me I mean the the zealots agreed with the Pharisees and everything and making a compromising tax collector who's working for the enemy the hero of the story the one who's justified over the religious Pharisee oh no 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 they would not be okay with that and then the big one Jesus when he's questioned about taxes says render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and in that he approves of Jews paying taxes to Rome and that would have been like that's chief heresy I mean that is exactly what the founder of the zealots Judas the Galilean what he stood against because he would not uh, you know allow tribute to be paid to Rome and so Jesus is saying, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. They would have seen this as contrary to their core beliefs and core distinctives. So the zealot, typical zealot response to the Jesus of history would have probably seen Jesus as a threat. Because if everybody starts believing this, you know, you, you love your enemy, you reject violence, you, you, you pay your taxes to Caesar, I mean, Rome's just going to continue, and and we're we're not going to have our the land to ourselves. They're gonna they're gonna run. They're gonna rule us. They would have been totally against this. They want to take matters into their own hands and forcibly drive the Romans out until they had freedom. So that's a little history of the zealots. Once again, Pharisees, Sadducees, zealots, Essenes, zealots, mostly like the Pharisees. But freedom and liberty are their chief values. Hope this was helpful.